Uh, hello everybody, uh, welcome. Uh, so we are going to talk uh, now about uh, how you can manage uh, the issue of deploying your GeoServer configuration to different uh, environments. Uh, my name is Alexandre Gacon and I am currently working for uh, Camp, uh, which is uh, an open source IT service company based in France, uh, Germany, Switzerland. We are quite active uh, in the GIS uh, field with uh, committers and contributors to GeoServer, QGIS, uh, open layers, and uh, other uh, software. Um, so uh, we are going to to see some. Uh, um, uh, I am working as a, an architect, an architect and software engineer. I come to come for a GeoServer solution. Uh, and uh, with my work with my customer, one of the points I often met uh, is uh, how do you um, adapt and, and uh, change the configuration based on the environment you are targeting. So uh, today I am going to present you the different options you have, uh, including a Terraform provider we have developed for uh, the French firefighters. Uh, and also, uh, in each case, we are going to see uh, when you can use uh, each option. So first, uh, what are we talking about? Uh, when you uh, deploy, for example, an, um, um, your configuration, your zero server con configuration from your development environment to your uh, production environment, you have to take uh, to define what is going to change in your configuration. So generally, you have all the data store related information we are going to change because you are targeting another database with another credential. Sometimes you also have the security option you are, uh, which are going to change. For example, if you are using uh, OAuth, you perhaps have some configuration for uh, developers and some configuration for uh, UAT and, and uh, production. Uh, you also, uh, if you use your web cache, uh, perhaps you are going to hit another bucket for uh, production um, and uh, over, uh, over stuff like that. Another point to take into account is also uh, how your architecture is influencing how you are doing uh, the, the, the deployment. Uh, for, uh, based on which edition of GeoServer you are using, the classic one or the GeoServer Cloud edition, how if you use uh, Web Archive or Kubernetes, you are going to have influences on your deployment. Uh, and there is also the catalog. If you use GBC uh, catalog or uh, data uh, dear uh, folder, you will see you also have uh, a number of uh, changes in your deployment. So let's see uh, what are our options. The first one, perhaps uh, too obvious, but you can use a GeoServer Admin UI. So it's the idea, it just, uh, you have the administration UI, you reduce the configuration manually on the target environment. Uh, it's, it, it, uh, it works uh, if you have some customer, you have a small and simple configuration with a few layers, perhaps it's good enough for this uh, customer. Uh, and, uh, but you have some constraint indeed because you, only, you can do that only if you have extension with your UI uh, administration or some settings. Uh, it's, uh, you, you won't be able to scale if you have uh, a lot of environments. So for CI, CD, for example, uh, workflow is not going to work. Uh, also, uh, you, it, it won't fit for a uh, high frequency uh, update. And, uh, but it also can be a solution if you don't have, for some customer, because of some customer policy, you don't have access to the data folder directly. So the second option, which is the, the most common one, I think, is to uh, use data defaulter, uh, as presented by uh, Andra before, uh, and, uh, and adapt it to your target environment. Uh, so the, basically, the idea is to copy uh, the data div from your development environment, for example, to your production environment, and do the changes to match your this new uh, environment. Uh, it could also be a copy through, for example, some uh, uh, SCM solution like, uh, like it, but at the end, it's, it's kind of copy. So to do so, so 
it's kind of repetition of what uh, Andrea just said. Uh, uh, you have to be prepared to to, do, to to have a configuration which fit this use case. So first, you don't you. It's generally best practice for uh, geo server. So you extract the data here for the for your deployment fo folder by using the geo server data here. Uh, variable, you remove the data out of uh, this folder also. Uh, the, you extract the log files, the geocache files if you are using geocache. And, of, and also, I suggest that you use uh, environment parameterization, which uh, make uh, uh, easy to have only in one point uh, all the changes for your environment. If you, if you work like that, sorry. Um, if you if you work like that, so uh, when do you uh, when I use uh, this uh, solution uh, first uh, with the customer, which can uh, which allow some write access to the data dear folder. Uh, it works well. It works with all the settings and all the extension of uh, Geo Server. So uh, it's, a, it's a good solution. Uh, it's uh, only compatible with the file-based catalog. Uh, when you're doing updating for a JDBC catalog, it's more difficult to update. Uh, so I will uh, use it for uh, more for cases when we have several uh, limited set of environment I will update uh, after some changes. Uh, for example, with having a, a property file for each of my env environment, and not too much for a CI/CD workflow, for example. Uh, since there is some reload of the configuration when you do changes, uh, it's work well with the application which uh, can have a small uh, interruption of uh, during the reload of the configuration or a small catalog. And uh, also, it's easier to, to use when you are ready to make full update of the configuration when you, uh, you, you, you do the, the update. So we, we have seen uh, um, the data here uh, work. There is a, a small community plugin, which is a backup restore plugin, which can be used to do the same thing but with uh, a Joseph extension, and uh, which had some additional features like uh, REST API to, um, to move uh, the configuration from one server to another. Uh, it also, uh, also allows for password replacement uh, automatically, and also to do some partial restore of a workspace, of, uh, of one workspace, so you don't have to update your whole configuration uh, yeah, at uh, one time. Uh, so when could you use, uh, use uh, this solution? First, you have to have a customer which is OK to use community modules, which is not always the case. Uh, it works only with file-based catalog because uh, it's, in fact, putting the file into uh, a, a compressor archive and move the compressor archive, so it's not working with the GDBC catalog. Uh, it's not something which is not supported by uh, GeoServer Cloud. It's uh, a community module only for GeoServer Classic. Uh, it's good for confidential confid confidentiality because you you can inject during the REST API the, your um, credential from uh, or your secrets during the the update. Uh, if you have some partial updates, when you want only to uh, update only one workspace among several, it's a uh, fit well in this, in this case. And also, since there is a REST API, uh, it's also a good uh, candidate for uh, when you have limited access to the disk uh, system of your environment. Let's continue. You can also uh, work with the REST API of your server to do this deployment. Uh, so the, the, the idea is to uh, you have some kind of configuration instruction and you use either some script, some curl uh, calls uh, to uh, to your production environment to do configuration changes. Uh, there is several Python clients which are uh, available. Uh, GeoServer Rest Config, GeoServer Rest. Uh, yesterday I discovered GeoServer X. 
So there is already uh, several clients if you are uh, okay to, you, to work with um, uh, Python. Uh, when uh, when it's fine to you to work with uh, REST API, uh, the, if you are agnostic to if you want to be agnostic of the catalog solution you are using, it's a good candidate. It works with both uh, GeoServer Classic and GeoServer Cloud. Uh, since you are using the REST API, you, it works uh, when you are limited, limited or no access to disk and folder. Uh, since the changes pushed by uh, the REST API are um, directly taken into account by your server. Uh, it's uh, also a good uh, option when you want to limit the unavailability of your server and uh, or when you do, are doing some frequent updates or partial updates. Uh, one of the things that it's not uh, to, to keep in mind when working with the Python clients is generally they don't cover all the um, uh, all the rest endpoints of your server, so you have to check that uh, the, the client is uh, okay for your use case. Uh, so, like I said in introduction, we have, we developed now for uh, a year now for the French Five Fighter um, Terraform provider to uh, manage uh, the um, the definition of the your server configuration. Uh, so uh, the idea is to use uh, Terraform built-in features to encapsulate and orchestrate calls to the REST API. So for those who are not, uh, who don't know Terraform, it's an originally an infrastructure as code uh, tool, uh, language, for which you are describing the, the state you want to, to have in, the, in your configuration. And uh, Terraform uh, can compare to the state that you have uh, deployed to define which operation you need to uh, apply on your configuration to reach uh, the state. So it's uh, determined the dependencies between the resources. Uh, it also uh, determine, uh, it, it will check that uh, to do only the required operation if a resource is already available. So uh, compared to the classical REST API solution, it, uh, it takes in charge a lot of uh, things that uh, elsewhere, uh, in another case, you will have to develop by N. So, uh, like, since it's based on the REST API, you can uh, have the same uh, use cases. Uh, it's, uh, if you are already working with Kubernetes, uh, it's a good candidate also to, uh, or with Terraform, to, to use it. Uh, we use it uh, with, uh, also with very frequent updates like in a CI-CD workflow. Uh, currently, for the French Fry Fighters, we have uh, one environment per uh, developers. Uh, so we are maintaining uh, about 40 to 50 development environments, each one with the GeoServer configuration uh, maintained through the Terraform configuration. And in addition, we're also maintaining uh, 10 uh, UAT environment uh, with uh, this system now. So, uh, to, to conclude, we have uh, seen uh, a, a wide uh, range of options when it comes to uh, deploy the configuration of GeoServer onto uh, different environments. Uh, either through the admin UI or through uh, working on the data gear or even through the REST API. Uh, to my experience, there is no, uh, there is no single solution. So uh, you have to pick the best uh, option or mix of options for your customer and for your project or uh, because some settings you will uh, manage in one way, over you will, uh, the more you are close to the technical side of a setting, the more you will have to work with the data gear folder. Uh, the more you run the application or uh, business logic, the more you can use uh, over tools like the REST API or the Terraform provider. So thank you for your attention.